Okay, today we start to, to travel in, uh, in the field of uh, uh, regenerative medicine for cardiovascular disease. And uh, as you know, in the past, the art uh, kept a, a big attention from different people, in this case, Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, right now, we are uh, investigating uh, the same organ with a different technology using imaging in these cases. This is a, a, a picture of uh, art, human art. As you see, in the, these vessels are coronary vessels that uh, uh, bring uh, blood, that uh, perfuse the heart. And then you have uh, also the aorta and then the pulmonary uh, artery. But uh, the first uh, investigator of the art was Aristotle that uh, in the 315 before Christ said that uh, the heart is, in the, is the most important organ of the human body because it's the primum orians, the first organ that starts to beat, and is, so start to be alive. It is the last organ, so ultimum orians, is the last organ that uh, died. Uh, the heart is composed, uh, as you see in this picture, is a very well organized structure. Uh, this is an uh, electronic microscopic scan, as you see in the cardiomyocytes, and in these uh, spaces you can find the coronary vessel. And uh, it's composed with different kinds of cells. As you see, uh, you can find uh, cardiomyocytes, these are uh, uh, murine cardiomyocyte isolated, and they are still beating. The other cells that compose the myocardium is the uh, endothelial cells. This process is the sprouting process, no? And uh, the other cells uh, naturally involved uh, in the tissue are the, the, fi the fibroblasts. These are cardiac fibroblasts that are uh, uh, coming other end to the bottom of the field, as you see is a time lapse. And uh, in these cases, uh, you have a very well organized, as I told you, structure. And with a, a big component, the vascular component, uh, and is, is also well organized. As you see, one myosat is surrounded by three capillaries. This is the myocytes. And the one capillary feeds about uh, three, this is error, three uh, cardiomyocytes. So it means that uh, there is a, a very important concept, is the vascular interdependence, as in the lung, it means that uh, this network of vessel is strictly related to the function of the cardiomyocytes. And uh, when you have uh, an injury in the myocardium, so the myocardium is infarcted, uh, the whole concept means that you have uh, a hole, no? you have uh, a necrotic area. So uh, the usual artwork is uh, uh, you have a replacement of the heart muscle with the scar tissue, so not functional tissue. It's only collagens and with some cell inside. When you have an infarction, as you see in this picture, this is a bullseye that we obtain with a diagnostic clinical tool, is a positron emission tonography. We inject the ammonia, is a radio tracer, and we can measure the myocardial blood flow. This is the left ventricle, this is the apex, and then the basis. And as you see, there is a hole here with a, a dramatic reduction of the myocardial perfusion when you have a damage. And uh, this damage is compared to a reduction also with the, the metabolism of the heart in the same area. So it means that uh, also the function of the myocardium is related, of course, uh, to the perfusion. And uh, in these cases, we obtain the same image this is an as one pig that is more similar to human. Uh, with the technology that we are developing is the hyperpolarization using the magnetic resonance imaging. We inject in this case is a pyruvate uh, uh, doped uh, hyperpolarized with uh, um, 
a different state uh, of magnetization of the nucleus. And uh, in one shot, you can see in the same area the metabolism of the pyruvate. So in the same area, we can measure how much lactate is there or how much bicarbonate. Why I'm saying uh, these two different uh, metabolites for the pyruvate? You can have also alanine or uh, hydrogenate pyruvate because the bicar bicarbonate is an index of uh, aerobic metabolism and uh, the lactate is an index of anaerobic metabolism. And when you have a damage, uh, start a process that the name is the remodeling. As you know, you have a, a progressive loss of a cardiac cell in the area of uh, myocardial infarction. After that, you have a replacement of the lost cell with the scar tissue, a thinning of the wall, and the dilation of the chamber. Means that the heart has not the same structure, and so has not the same function. And uh, when you have uh, not the same, when you don't have the same function, you have a, a progressive impairment of the global function of the heart, and so the heart uh, is not able to pump blood in the in the organs and uh, to support the other organ, the other function. This is our model of heart failure that we use, uh, in this case, is, uh, uh, with uh, uh, pace-induced, but also with uh, uh, coronary embolism. And uh, the same heart before, as you see, this is the left ventricle, the right ventricle. We have a well-organized uh, function and also um, a good performance. We obtain this image by MRI. And uh, after uh, uh, four weeks, uh, five weeks, uh, the injury, as you see, in the same ventricle is completely dilated. The wall is really thin. The right ventricle is really dilated. So this is, is the end point of the remodeling process. And in these cases, if you put a lens here, you can see that the vessel has a rarefied. You have a loss of cell. You have an increase of the collagen amount. And uh, um, microscopically, you have uh, a more thinning wall, more dilation, and of course, a reduced function. Pigs. We are using pigs. Thank you for the question. We are using pigs because a pig heart is, this is uh, similar to the human heart. We have the same coronary anatomy, and uh, so we have not anastomosis. And also, the genetic pattern is uh, overlapping. So uh, it's the same. Uh, you have to think that in the past, we using the swine art to transplant human. Then they stop it for virus into the cell. No? But uh, means that it is the same. So we are using something that there is a preclinical model. If works in the pigs, works in the human, of course. Uh, we use a, a different technology. Uh, in these cases, uh, yes. Different technology. This uh, we obtained by MRI in our institution. As you see, the same heart, 21 days uh, of uh, stimulation in these cases. And if you see in different sites, uh, uh, you have uh, a real uh, investigation uh, of the region. OK, of the rich region. Means that. Uh, there is a, a different impairment of the function, as you've seen. Different color means different uh, grade of this function. So we can detect uh, by MRI where we can deliver our drug, our uh, therapy. When you have a remodeling, you have another kind of uh, marker. You have an increased uptake of the glucose means that uh, the heart uh, provides uh, a different uh, metabolic mirror. So it means that uh, the heart normally uses free fatty acids and less glucose. In this case, when you have an heart failure, when you have an impairment of uh, the global function, you have an increased uptake uh, of the glucose. And we assess uh, this by positron emission tomography. 
So different people started to uh, develop a new kind of approach to uh, replace the injured tissue with the new functional tissue. Why? Because uh, they discovered in the myocardium in three different kind of uh, mammal, means uh, adult rats, adult dogs, and human, a different kind of cells that before the people never imagined to find. And these cells are the stem cell. This discovery, this is another picture of stem cell that we obtained it, uh, with uh, um, a tip microscopy. And these cells are self-renewing, clonogenic, and multipotent. I know that you know what what means. I mean, this cell can uh, differentiate in different kind of uh, lineage. Uh, if they are present in a different kind of environment. These are our stem cells investigated with a time lapse uh, of uh, uh, on nanograting, like 24 hours. Have you seen that the stem cells are really sensitive to the environment? I put this image in to see that if I change the substrate, the physical substrate, as mean nanograting in these cases, the cell start to explore the environment and find the right position and orient their body in the right position, following the uh, major axis of the nanogratings. So they are very smart cell. And uh, different investigators start to think uh, the function, which kind of function they have. They can uh, release uh, different paracrine factors, or as in these cases, or uh, at the beginning they thought that they can transdifferentiate in a different cell lineage when you inject this cell into the tissue. So we summarize uh, now our cardiovascular unit, cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, fibroblast, and the new entry, stem cell. So with this study, with this investigation, we can say that the cardiovascular unit uh, is composed by these uh, four main kind of cells. And come another concept, the cellular interdependence, means that uh, you cannot supply to the function and the structure of the art by using one single kind of cells. You, uh, you need to uh, allow a crosstalk between this kind of cells. They need to communicate each other in the best way to supply a uh, function. So you have to think not at one cells, but to the interaction between these different kind of cells. When you have an injury, like in these cases, this is a coronary angiography. Have you seen that uh, uh, they inject a, a contrast agent in the coronary and you have uh, a block? The, the contrast agent doesn't go on because you have uh, an obstruction of the coronary. Disease is the infarction. When happened this kind of injury, happen a bubble situation means that the cardiovascular unit start to um, go in different direction. You have a loss of cells. You have a different magnitude of release of several factors in the tissue. And so you have a different speech in the tissue. It means that the remodeling have behind a different behavior of these cells that change completely the speech. And uh, this observation come now, why? Because, uh, as I summarize in these uh, slides, the number of experimental studies on myocardial protection from ischemia performed since the 1971 
is enormous. It's more than 20,000. And right now, the problem is still there. Maybe we have to change the point of view of the situation. Maybe we are doing something that is not completely right. The only, the only strategy that improves the quality of life uh, and uh, uh, all of uh, an improvement of the cardiac fascia is the angioplasty. As you see in here, there is the obstruction. They pass a catheter. Then they inflate the balloon in the coronary. They allocate a stent here, inject, and you have a reperfusion. This is the only method right now in uh, hospital close to the bedside that works. There are no other. But there are more than 20,000 studies. And uh, why we are continuing to study the problem? Because till now, the mortality for this kind of injury is really is still there, is high. In uh, 2010, at 10 years after the presentation of the symptom, the uh, survival, I mean, uh, is improved compared to the beginning in the 1972, but uh, the people are still dying for this problem in the Western country. And so we started uh, to think that uh, maybe in the past there is the answer of the problem. Uh, for many years, uh, the investigators uh, uh, of the liver thought that uh, they um, they already knew in the past that the liver can regenerate because there is uh, the mythos of Prometheus. No? And uh, many friends that study the liver stay to say always, you know, we know there from many centuries and uh, we know that the liver. Igino, Caio Giulio Igino, in the first uh, century uh, after Christ, uh, write uh, a different form of the, uh, the story. As uh, in these cases, is uh, what, uh, what uh, you understand Latin? Yeah? No? And uh, in these cases, uh, uh, he say that uh, uh, an eagle, no, more like this is another name, Cotidia, every day, an eagle, every day uh, was eating the heart. And uh, during the night, the heart uh, regrowing. So if uh, the point of view of the hepatologist is correct, also this uh, approach maybe is correct. But uh, the story of regeneration is an old story. In the past, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the Deutsch investigate, German investigators start to, uh, to understand what happened after an injury, what is the process uh, mainly involved uh, in the uh, remodeling or the process that is uh, uh, ampered during the remodeling. And uh, have you seen uh, in the 1852 Colliker say that uh, also Frederick uh, Page say that the hyperplasia is the best process uh, that uh, happens in the myocardium, means that uh, the cell you know, uh, proliferate in the 1852. Maybe we were there at that time, maybe not. And uh, uh, in the 1889, another, uh, why, why stop uh, this, uh, this, this current? Uh, because Page died. And, uh, when uh, a teacher died and have no student, uh, so also your concept died. No? I start the concept of Tangle in 1889 that says, you know, hyperplasia is a, is a mistake uh, and the cardiomyocytes uh, react to an injury by hypertrophy. You know, they enlarge. No? They don't proliferate. Uh, we have also a diplomatic that sometimes try to find the right solution in the middle, and was Karsner that say, okay, there, there are both, there are hyperplasia and hypertrophy in 1925. 
No? The first guy that talked about regeneration in the cardiac muscle were, was Edward King no? in the 1939. So if you see that we are talking about the same stuff from Igino, no? so the first century after Christ, uh, now uh, 1852 and 1939. Uh, uh, what uh, he, he, he tried to describe on the paper what happened at proliferation is beautiful. As you see that after an injury, he said that the cardiomyocytes, look, they can divide. They design it. It's a, it's a beautiful study. We, we don't know what the other investigator investigated in the past, and we, so we think that we are discovering something that is different from the warm water. But sometimes is almost similar to the warm water. After that, in the 1956, Mario Robledo put this evidence, myocardial regeneration in young rats. He, he did a cryo injury on the epicardium of the rats, and then he started to make a picture with the microscope, uh, as you see, and count the cells, each cell count. No, it's a, a very tough study, published on a very important journal, American Journal of Pathology. And uh, what he said, that there is uh, a mitosis. This is the sequence. And these are cardiomyocytes. After, where? In the border zone around the crow injury. After that, uh, my friends, Antonio, make the same. Have you seen? Where is? Here. This is 1959. This is 201, New England Journal of Medicine, the most important journal for medical doctor. How is possible that someone publish something that already is published on the New England Journal of Medicine? Because you change the point of view with a different technique. It's the same. It looks same, no, similar, maybe, or no. So uh, have you seen that uh, he say that the number of mitotic myocytes increase uh, no, in the, uh, is, is, is amazing. OK. Uh, so now change, change. Grounds published on this paper in two to change the paradigm. So we can regenerate the art. And how you can regenerate the strategy is the replication of endogenous cardiomyocytes. So Robledo, Edward King, 1939. Or you can add something new, the stem cell that they were still there in 1939 if there are. And uh, you have also people died with stem cell in the heart and in the blood. But they say that maybe at the beginning were not there. So conversion of stem cell into a new cardiomyocyte. Replacement of stem cell pool. So the, the investigators start to think that maybe the question is, uh, when you have a myocardial infarction, you lose cell. OK? And in the cardiovascular unit that I described, cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, fibroblasts, stem cells, they suddenly decided to say, the question is because the stem cells that are rare in the myocardium no, are the most important cells. So we have to replace this cell to obtain a result. So why I'm saying that the stem cells are rare in the myocardium? Because, uh, as you know, the heart is one of the a few organs in the human body with a, a very low percentage of tumor. So it's not the case. If you have a low percentage of tumor in the heart, means that uh, the plasticity, the potential plasticity of the heart exists, but is weak, is low. So it means that maybe the stem cell is not the most important cell to replace in the infarcted heart. No? But they start to think that maybe the key was there. And uh, the first guy that published on stem cell in the heart 
published on circulation in 1999 was a guy, the name was Shini Tomita. He published on circulation in 1999. Nobody cared. We didn't know him. Nobody cared about, but he's the first paper. And he uh, induced the cryo and the epicardium of the heart, like Robledo, the same experiments. And then he injected autologous transplantation of bone marrow cells in the border zone area. And he saw in the rats, rats, uh, you know that they have uh, an accelerated metabolism. So it's, a, it's, a, it's very rich of growth factor, the rats, no? So it's more easy to reproduce some, okay. But it's the first stone, remember, cartesium. Rats, dogs, pigs, human, okay? Okay, so Tomita saw this. After that, uh, Orlik published the same things in mines, but on nature. And he published the same things, autologous transplantation of bone marrow cells, but with a different technique. He used it to mark the stem cell with some uh, uh, green flesh and protein. <coughs> and so you can see the effect described by Tomita uh, before. And uh, they published, uh, the, uh, the model was different, of course. It's not, a myocard it's not a, a, an injury, a cardiac injury evoked by cryo injury, but by ligage on the coronary. But there is always uh, a necrotic tissue in Tomita and in Orlik. But uh, nobody knows that in 2001, many other paper came out, Menashe. Menashe is a paper that uh, published in 201, nobody cares about this paper, and uh, injected in 201 autologous myoblast transplantation in post instruction scar. He used it, uh, in this case, myoblast, I mean satellite cells, no? From the muscle. And uh, Pagani in 203, who is this guy? Journal American College of Cardiology, another important thing. So, we go ahead, uh, Lancet, Lancet, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, ASMUS is the last one on circulation heart failure, intracoronary administration of bone marrow derived progenitor cell in patients, no, in army patients. Is a randomized, you know what does mean randomized study? Randomized means that uh, you use uh, a, a, a more con controlled, I mean, kind of selection means that you don't care about some parameter. You have a myocardial infarction and you recruit patients to inject your tissue, your, uh, your cell. Placebo controlled. So they have a placebo here. No? Double blind. Multi center. Uh, but. Uh, the most important study are the Dimler study that published, uh, uh, Zaya is the husband, and uh, Zaya is a very important cardiology in Germany, and uh, Dimler is the wife, is like the Curie, you know the Curie? And uh, you have the Frankfurt study that say, the top care uh, repair, Amy, that uh, when you put the patients uh, in the coronary unit, uh, you reperfuse the coronary, the function of the left ventricle improved naturally from the 47% to 50%. Okay, we know, but uh, we, we want more. We want a bigger effect. So they injected the bone marrow stem cell, and the ejection fraction starts from 48% to 54.5. So mean that you have a relative increase of 3% here versus 5.5, but is significant. So means that is true. Statistically significant means that is true. But the question is, is a therapy? Means uh, the proof of concept. When the proof of concept become a therapy? When you inject something, uh, I mean the endostoic volume that is a marker of remodeling doesn't change, no? <coughs> And uh, when you can say to your friend that has a left ventricular ejection fraction of 35, 
no? e say ok I can inject your stem cell so your injection fraction for 35 come to 39 you don't jump the NIH class you, still there, you are still there to take diuretics uh, beta blockers no? your, your life doesn't change so we make we, we are doing something to improve the quality of the life no? and also to improve the, the care of the patient. So we repeated the same experiments in our institution using pigs. We ligate the coronary, the, the descending coronary artery, as you see in the infarction. We uh, sign the epicardium uh, with the suture where we injected the, the where we are injecting the cell. This is uh, through a needle. And uh, after uh, four weeks, we injected the cells uh, as in patients after one hour. Because when you have a myocardial infarction and move from your house to the hospital, they calculated that you need around 50 minutes. So you really perfuse the coronary, and then you inject your cells. So we reproduce the same time, one hour. And uh, we inject the cells. No, in no reperfused uh, myocardial infarction. And after four weeks, we put our pigs in a, the MRI unit. It's the same unit that we use for patients during the night. And uh, these are the results. Nothing. We, inject, we injected, uh, so the, the global infascar sites that we calculated by MRI using the gadolinium, no? that is uh, the gold standard method to assess the infascar sites, that doesn't change in a treated art compared to the saline, sterile, saline solution. What kind of cells did you inject? stem cell. No, they were not autologous, but uh, uh, this is a xenotransplant. Uh, but the cells are still there, and now I will show you, because we uh, marked the cells with a, a reporter gene for MRI, the AV chain of ferritin. So we can detect not the iron, but we can detect the cell alive in the tissue with the ferritin there. I will show you. No, these are mesenchyma stem cell. No, from the uh, uh, the fetal membrane, the placental fetal membrane. So the more active cells that we have in the human. After before that, we have embryonal cells. So the more active that we we know, as as they know, these are not autologous. We are doing the the experiments uh, with you and uh, Daniela, uh, with autologous, and uh, we are doing. No, no, no. These are the. The, we already published uh, on cardiovascular. And uh, as you've seen, also the perfusion doesn't change. You, you remember positron emission tomography by using ammonia, no? And also the uptake of glucose doesn't change. Compressors. So the scar is there. The injury is still there. And uh, as I was telling before, we uh, marked these cells with... Uh, as you see, this is the iron into the cell. Uh, with a, a reporter gene for MRI, is the heavy chain of ferritin. And uh, this reporter gene allows to detect and uh, to track the cells alive in the myocardium. And uh, we have a signal uh, uh, detectable by using a 1.5 Tesla MRI. And uh, we did also uh, histological assessment and uh, the, you have uh, a overlapping of the signal of iron, nucleus, mitochondria because it's xenotransplantation and if you've seen that uh, you have the cell still there in the border zone. So maybe the question is another. Maybe we have to maintain the homeostasis of the cardiovascular unit. So it's not important to inject stem cells. It's one of the most cells that compose the cardiovascular unit. But we have to find a procedure to maintain the function of this unit. 
And uh, as I described in this picture, this uh, uh, is a section of the myocardium during uh, uh, systole, as you see, is more thick. And during is diastole, is more thin. These are the pressure volume curve. And we assess, in this case, we plot the left ventricular pressure on the left ventricular volume. This point is the end systolic. And this point is end-diastolic. And have you seen there is a cardiovascular unit, like in the liver, like in the lung, like in the spleen. No? The nature need to be simple and uh, need to be repeated in the same way in different organs to work in so complex manner. Okay? And uh, have you seen vessel, stem cell, these are some neuronal derived cells that are Kaya like that Popescu found in the, in the myocardium. And uh, you have uh, different uh, factors that interact uh, the enzymatic activity because these cells are still alive. So it's very important to assess uh, how change the activity of the enzyme into the cell, the enzyme of the respiratory chain. No? The epigenome changes are very important in the cardiovascular unit, how the cells adapt to the environment. We are so conditioned to the environment, like human, why not cell? So the environment is very important and uh, interact with the function and the survival of the cell. But uh, we are in the heart. Can you imagine that if you take a mesenchymal stem cell and you inject the mesenchymal stem cell in the cartilages of the knee, no? this cell, this cell becomes cartilage. No? And, uh, they publish a lot about this. They are using it in sportive medicine. And why, uh, how they explain this? Because the mechanical force no, condition the environment, condition the differentiation. How is possible that in the heart, the heart is a mechanical organ that develop a pressure of 120 millimeter of mercury. No? How is it possible that the heart is the only organ where the mechanical force are nothing? You can inject everything and they don't care. You can inject the same cell that you inject in the knee and they become cartilage because you have a force. But if you inject in the heart this cell, they are still there, they survive. They differentiate in endothelial cells. Nobody cares about this question, but it's an important question. And nobody wants to study this question because it's a low priority question. I have a paper that is turning around different journal that I don't know where, the, where, where it will arrive. And they write, it's a low priority. I use it in a nanograting uh, study, different kind of mechanical stimulation, pressure. I try to reproduce the dynamic of the myocardium. And the editor said it is a low priority. It's a low priority. And uh, the, other, the other key is the release of the factors, okay, soluble factors. Your VGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, the hepatocyte growth factor, the stromal derived factor one, they recruit the cell that starts circulating in the, in the blood. But I want to, sp I'm here, I collaborate with you. I believe that the VGF is a very important factor and condition the homeostasis of the cardiovascular unit. And I was involved in uh, one of your study with uh, Lorena, Mauro, and uh, Serena. And uh, in this study, I mean, we are testing uh, another isoform, the vascular endothelial growth factor that you know very well, that is the isoform B. Why? Because the isoform B has uh, a selected action of the receptor of the VGF. So they told me that works in this way, so I believe. And uh, you have a different signal. If you act on the VGF receptor 1, you have uh, more an anti-apoptotic effect or pro-hypertrophic effect. If you act on a VGF receptor 2, you have uh, a more neangiogenic effect than the other. So in these cases, you need, to have, you need to be very focused on the problem to have a therapy. In this case, it's, uh, uh, Udai injected the virus in, uh, with the VGF A or B or PBS in different sites of the infarction. 
And uh, after uh, four weeks, uh, they found that if you inject uh, VGFA or VGFE be carried by uh, an adeno-associated vector produced here, the type 2, you have a reduction of the scar. So we have here no stem cell transplantation. In this case, you have an effect like stem cell transplantation. Maybe we touched some network that is involved in the homeostasis of the cardiovascular unit. And uh, they investigated the angiogenic response. You have an increase of the angiogenic response in the both treatment compared to the serine solution. You have an improvement, uh, long-term improvement, so stable improvement of the global ejection fraction in the treated uh, heart with VGFB more than VGFA. And uh, you have uh, a less statistical significant dilation of in and diastolic phase of the left ventricle. And you have also an increase in regional contractility. This is a relative value, the thickening, uh, means the difference between the end systolic and end diastolic thickness. So you have a relative, is a, an index that we use in the clinical assessment to assess the regional contractility of the heart. In these cases, we assess the contractility in the border zone or the adjacent zone, I mean the zone that are more involved in the stress because the damage in the heart is always a regional question. And in the mechanism, the experiments that uh, Lorena did uh, in uh, Trieste showed that uh, uh, the overexpression of EGF does not affect the cell proliferation. Uh, you have uh, a, a reduced uh, death by apoptosis. Uh, this is uh, in vivo compared to the PBS, but there are no differences between the two treatments. And uh, you have a very interesting uh, uh, upregulation of the VGF receptor type 1 in a condition similar to the coronary ligation, mean the hypoxia. The other receptors are expressed, but uh, uh, to find uh, that one receptor is more expressed than the other help you to direct you in the better way in an hypothetic mechanism. But in these cases, we use, uh, we use uh, vectors, viral vectors, that they are using in clinical stuff. But uh, you are always carrying something that is exogenous into the heart. And sometimes, some people could be more sensitive than in other people in, in the inflammatory response. The best way for the therapy in human is to find the drug. If you find the drug in each field, you find the solution in this case. Of course, if you have a genetic problem, you have to act in a different way. But if you have an induced injury by a coronary ligation in this case, if you have something that you can administer easily by the patients and by limiting the side effects is the best way. In these cases, I, will st I, I start to, to test different Stuff. I mean, I started to inject uh, the uh, rosuvastatin, uh, and I saw that the Arcadia fashion uh, become, uh, you have a, a, a severe impairment compared to the same solution. I tried to inject it, uh, some diuretics, uh, and I saw that uh, some effect in improved, but is related to the overload. But this is, is really interesting because uh, we completed the, the study. We started from uh, the rats. Another group uh, in the USA applied for the preclinical model, and we did also in human. So the triodotyronine is a hormone, is an active hormone that we produce regularly in this time that you are sitting on the chair by the thyroid. And, uh, uh, is produced by the T4, no? the enzyme that converts into T3 is the diodinase. And uh, the levotriodotyronin is a hormone uh, essential, very important. And uh, is also really cheap. Previous study from uh, 
Institute of Clinical Physiology, uh, a place where I'm doing some experiments, uh, found that uh, if you decrease uh, the amount of uh, triodotyronine in the myocardium, you have uh, a big sufferance of the tissue and you have uh, a severe impairment of the contractility. So it means that triodotyronine is a hormone that is produced in the thyroid but works very well in the heart to preserve a disease, to preserve an impairment. And uh, this down regulation that we produced uh, in uh, experimental field uh, really happened, happened in patients. In this paper, have you seen that uh, you have a, a rapid down regulation of thyroid hormone in patients that have a myocardial infarction? Rapid and significant. Why? Because uh, the thyroid hormone is an active hormone that induces metabolism. So when you have an impairment of the heart that is a very important organ, you have uh, a defense. So you reduce the oxygen consumption, and so you need to reduce uh, also the release of thyroid hormone. But in that case, uh, the question is, how much? Another study published in the American Journal of Physiology demonstrated that uh, if you administer uh, il DITPA, that is an analog of the triodotyronine, increase the level of vascular endothelial growth factor in the blood. So it means that uh, the, the field is correct. It means that you have to maintain the homeostasis in the cardiovascular unit. Other people, in this case the group of Dillman, is a very important group, uh, assessed that uh, the thyroid hormone is very important for the angiogenic response after myocardial infarction. It is related to the receptor. In this case, the receptor involved is a thyroid receptor type beta. And they did these experiments using wild type mice and knockout mice and after an injury of the heart. And he saw that you have a reduction of angiogenic response after an injury in presence of knockout mice for thyroid receptor beta, but not alpha. And when you have a selective knockout for thyroid receptor beta in cardiomyocyte, nothing happened. So it means that the cells principally involved in the angiogenic response during the injury are not the cardiomyocytes, in these cases modulated by the thyroid hormone. So we tried to administer thyroid hormone, level, uh, the triodotyronine, at very low concentration, physiological concentration, only to replace the physiological level of the thyroid hormone that are still now in our blood by using a, a long-term infusion with the ulcer pump, a microsmotic pump under the, the skin. And uh, we select the time under the guidance of the clinical field. I mean, after 72 hours, the myocardial infarction, when the low thyroid, when uh, the level of thyroid hormone are very low, you have uh, the, the, the lower level of this hormone, we start uh, the infusion with the triodotyronine or PBS. After four weeks, we went to investigate what happened. Echocardiographically, uh, histologically, uh, by molecular biology, in different way. Uh, uh, what we saw, this is uh, an art uh, with a, a very big infarction. Uh, these are my infarction. And uh, as you see in uh, this area is completely infarcted when you use the PBS. No? You inject PBS, so it is so dilated. The long axis is very short. It's like a balloon, so it's really remodeled. And uh, after four weeks that we inject the thyroidotyrion, we have a small uh, scar here, but it's not the same. This is a long axis. 
after uh, histological assessment, as you've seen the results, the scar is still there. You have uh, a significant uh, hypertrophic response, but uh, these effects are not related to hemodynamic changes, meaning that the heart rate in this rat is normal. So you have not an increase in oxygen consumption because we are doing, a, as you say, a molecular trigger, no? It's not a, a therapeutic dose. It's a molecular trigger. It's the, the amount needing to maintain the homeostasis of the cardiovascular unit, not to induce an hemodynamic response, increase of heart rate, increase of pressure. These side effects uh, are not good in a cardiopathic patient, and the cardiologists, they know pretty well. But if you use a lower dose, they are more effective without these side effects. And so, the endothelial cells, uh, so, thyroid hormone that we produce by nature is a pleiotropic molecule that, as I show you, act at the same dose in different cells that are different sensitive to the same molecule. Means that the threshold change for the cell with a different effect. These are endothelial cells, the triodotyronine. <coughs> we see in myocardial tissue that in the border zone, you have in the treated rats a replacement, not an overexpression, a replacement of the expression of a thyroid receptor type beta. And you have an angiogenic, a more angiogenic response compared to the PBS. We assessed the using also an endothelial marker like is the CD31. And on the cardiomyocytes, we saw that uh, uh, they died less. We have an increased survival. And uh, the more interesting field, and you have not an impairment of mitochondrial biogenesis. In these cases, we related the mitochondrial DNA and the nuclear DNA, as you've seen, you have not uh, you have a replacement. You never go upper the physiological solution. These are sham operated. And uh, we try to hypothesize a possible mechanism involved that is related to the hypoxic uh, signaling. No? And uh, what we saw that, uh, um, interestingly, the HIF uh, one hypoxic factor is overexpressed in the border zone. Means that uh, the signal related to the hypoxic, sin, the, to the hypoxic condition is uh, alerted, is uh, um, ready to run, ready to respond, ready. So the HIF is not an index, and is the first evidence, is not an index uh, in these cases of a maladaptive response, but is a, a trigger, a switch, for an adaptive response. It's like a, an oxidative preconditioning. And uh, we went to investigate the expression of two important uh, transcription factors of the mitochondrial. The mitochondrial transcription factor type A that is replaced in the border zone compared to the saline. Saline border zone saline triadotyronine. Also the PGC1 is the alter transcription factor. You have a replacement, an homeostasis. You don't go upper. And uh, you have also a progressive um, amelioration of the function of the respiratory chain. This is uh, the activity of the complex four of the respiratory chain that is really important because the complex four binds the peroxide hydrogen and produce water. So it is an antioxidant system. So it means that the cell is more resistant to the ischemic insult because it is alerted. So can react to an ischemic and hypoxic condition. So this is an observation. What is the mechanism? The, uh, the study 
I, I, I wanted that the study was uh, executed by uh, my mentor of the American Arts Association, that is Hossein Ardeali. Hossein Ardeali is a mitochondriologist that work at Northwestern University in Chicago. And I said, Hossein, I want to assess this hypothesis. He didn't know about the in vivo results. And uh, he tried these uh, in vitro experiments using T3 at my dose in present or absence of uh, an, uh, mediators of ischemia, in this case it's peroxide hydrogen. And have you seen in the presence of T3, the TMRA uptake that is a marker of uh, mitochondrial viability is replaced to the homeostasis. And uh, also the viability assessed in a simple <coughs> way by triple blue assay is also tend to replace to the homeostasis. But what is the mechanism? That if you add a blocker of the mitochondrial potassium ITP channel, this effect progressively disappear. So the triodotyronine work as an opener of the mitochondrial potassium ATP channel at a lower dose. So is a classic hormone use it as a drug because we have a mechanism. Triodotyronine uh, is a periotropic molecule, but what happened to the stem cell? Is the other cell of our cardiovascular unit, right? As you've seen, the marker for mesenchymal stem cell in the heart, this is a very rude uh, immunohistochemistry without fluorescence. I don't like fluorescence. I want to see the cell, okay? Like is the signal, the real signal, the natural signal. No, is is not very well to see, but is real. In this case, is a strong positive signal. Is a, a marker on mesenchymal stem cell, and as you've seen, you have more here. Some guys could see, I know we have other kind of marker, it's not only the only one, but we started to assess this at the beginning. And at the beginning we thought that maybe we have a replication of stem cell. Maybe you have an enrichment of stem cell pool. No, you have simply a maintenance of the population of straw one of straw positive cell in the myocardium because the other died. And uh, we try to understand the mechanism also in this way. Is the same the mechanism in the uh, in undifferentiated cell compared to a differentiated cell? The metabolism is different. The enzymatic activity is different. The threshold to the oxidative stress is different because the stem cell, the cardiac stem cell, has, are more resistant to the oxidative stress. You need more than 300 micromolar of oxygen, of uh, um, uh, hydrogen peroxide to induce a stress, not 100 micromolar. So you have a different threshold. What we saw that uh, in cardiomyocytes, you have an apoptosis not caspase 3 dependent in our model. But uh, in stems, in cardiac uh, resident stem cell, you have a dead caspase 3 dependent. Is the first difference. And the T3 improve the uh, survival. And uh, we want to repeat the same thing, the FAM, no? And in the stem cell, increase the expression of the FAM in the same way. And we went also to assess the proliferation of the cells, the, the mitochondrial, uh, the metabolic viability. It is maintained to the homeostasis. We did the ATFAM knockdown in these cells, and we saw that uh, the versus the ancillary line, line set control, you have uh, a progressive impairment of TFAM related mechanism. We went to investigate uh, the um, my, my mitochondrial biogenesis using JC1 uh, biomarker, and uh, we saw that 
that uh, in presence uh, of uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide increase the signal by JC1 means that the mitochondria are fragmented. No? You have a mitochondrial injury. But if you add T3, you have less. And in TFAM lockdown, doesn't happen. So, it's important to translate the information that you got in your lab. It's important to move in the bad sign in the patients. It is mandatory because we have more than 20,000 studies without the results. The people still dying. The, the heart failure is still there. The cost for the health system is really high for these patients that are still at home. So to find a therapy means to reduce the cost for the health system. So it's also a social problem, right? So started uh, the last year, the, the, the patient study, the first study, thyroid hormone replacement therapy in patients with uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction and borderline reduced triadotyrin level because we treat the only patient that they had this kind of adaptation. No? That the, the level of the triadotyrin come down and you have an impairment severe of the myocardial function. And uh, is a pilot phase 2B randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. And uh, we used patients, uh, STEMI patients undergoing myocardial vascularization within a 24 hour. And uh, we treated uh, with uh, levotriadotyrin or placebo at the same dose that we used in rats. In acute phase, when they arrived in the hospital, and uh, at home, in the chronic phase, no? so long term. And uh, we make also a follow-up. You know what I mean follow-up? Follow-up means that we check the same patient at 30 days, three months, a sim a six months after the hospital discharge. And what we saw? We saw, first of all, that is not toxic. So the first thing you know, is mean that uh, it's safe, right? As in this case, it means that the hemodynamic parameter doesn't change in 24 patients. So we are going on. Right now, this is, uh, uh, is for my friends, I think is the first time that they show this data in, uh, in Italy with the courtesy of uh, Giorgio Gervasi. It is a, a big guy, a big person. And uh, we went to assess also by MRI Cardiomagnetic resonance imaging means data without operator interference. There is a machine, make a picture, and you cannot decide the position of the picture. It's there. And uh, we evaluated the wall uh, motion stress index. Have you seen in the not treated patients is down. The wall motion stress index means it's an index of uh, function of the heart, of the region of the heart. And uh, the heart rate, that is uh, the tremendous uh, problem for cardiology because you increase with triodotyrone in the oxygen consumption, if you seen, doesn't change. Why? Because, as I told you, we use lower dose. For each drug, the problem is not, is not only the quality of the drug, but is most important, the dose. Each drug can become a weapon for toxic. Also the salt. If you eat one kilo of salt, you die. Okay? But if you put a, a very small uh, amount of salt on your meat, uh, it's very good. No? Uh, so, uh. And we assessed the, the infascar size by gadolinium and MRI. As you've seen, is the extension. Like in, as I told you, in pig, no? We use the same assessment for human in our experimental model because we have to translate the information to human. And uh, <laughs> what we saw that reduce the infascar size. P0.026. Without stem cell transplantation. So means that the problem is not in this case. And thanks to the stem cell, we, are, we arrive to this point. Because we understand the physiology of the problem. We understand 
which kind of difference, or which kind of point we have to reach in the problem. And uh, in these cases, we have to assess also the limitation due to physical activity, and this really reduce the limitation, so they can do more physical activity, so improve the quality of the life. As you see in a patient with heart failure, as work as working this way. No, if you have uh, a, a reduced limitation of the physical activity, it means that can work with you to eat an ice cream without problem. And uh, limitation due to total pain because they have, uh, when you have a problem of the heart, sometimes you have a recurrent ischemia, you have angina. So you have a tremendous pain in the heart that make depress the patients. More patients with heart disease become depressed. And uh, also you have, a, a, the limit, we evaluated the limitation due to the general health. How you feel today? Oh well, no, bad. Okay, so they assess it and uh, always is significant uh, ameliorate. Conclusion, at the end of this travel with my bad English. First of all, the adult heart is uh, a lazy organ, self-renewing and self-protecting. The morphofunctional unit that modulate the myocardial plasticity necessarily consists of cardiomyocet endothelial cells, fibroblast, and stem progenitor cells. The key concept of the interdependence of vessel cell, like in the lung, like in the liver, nobody works alone. It's the team that win the game, not the single player. It's the same in the organ, like the heart is a vital organ. The transplantation of stem cells in the heart doesn't restore the interdependence of cardiovascular unit. Because it's a single player. What happened to the other one? We don't know. It is possible to mend the broken heart without stem cell transplantation. It is possible. You can use it uh, a, a gene therapy approach if you have if you focalize a single gene problem, if you really know that if you touch that gene you have not some rebound. Or you can use the drugs. We developed the drugs. is a, is another simple cheap drug. Uh, when we sub is the HBR is a triester or hyaluronic acid, 1842. Butyric acid, <laughs> very old. Butyric acid. We are close to the first at the end of the 1878, and uh, retinoic acid. No. We use retinoic acid for your cartilage. But if you esterify these three simple molecules in a complex, they come not like a single player. They come together, and you have a very good modulation of the cardiovascular unit. When we subunit, I didn't talk about this. I talked about something more uh, close to the human problem because we are impatient. With the HBR, we are not impatient. We will arrive in patient. We are, we are doing now experiments in pigs. We are completing the line, no? If it works in peace, we jump to the patient. If it doesn't work, we don't jump, okay? But uh, it's really important to understand that uh, when some editor answer with you that you discover something like that is a low priority, you have to feel that you are on the right way. So low dose of triodolite tyranny maintain the function of cardiovascular unit and limits the post ischemic cardiac remodeling in a pleiotropic manner. No? So, this uh, is the laboratory where I still work now. Is uh, the laboratory of experimental cardiology. Um, these are projects that are conducing uh, um, under the supervision of um, uh, Professor Recchia, that is an uh, associate professor. Uh, at Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna, a full professor of physiology at New York Medical College. But these are my guy. I work with this guy. You know, these are, we have a, a late motive right now in uh, Pugliese dialect uh, that means zappa truva, means uh, you need to grow the land to find the solution. So you need to work, right? And this guy is Giacomo, is a cardiac surgeon. Silvia, you know Silvia Agostini, I recruited there uh, because uh, he was, uh, I mean, uh, she was around to find, and she's very good biology. 
Uh, Marco Matteucci is a histology guy, is very good. He's a simple guy, but is very effective. Fabio Bernini is my technician. Simone Romano is the best uh, guy that I met uh, in the last six months and uh, is a very good student. Uh, he is uh, falling in love about Trieste and Mauro Giacca, but uh, he's working uh, in Pisa. I said, I know I'm not so nice like Mauro, but uh, you are doing a very good job. These are our precious collaborators, Giorgio Ervasi, Francesca Forini for the T3. They, they follow me for the T3. Uh, for the Fondazione is the Institute of Clinical Physiology of the National Council of Research in Pisa. The Fondazione Gabriele Monastero Giovanni Acquario, 35 years old, is uh, a medical doctor, but the, the, the real job of this guy is uh, the uh, magnetic resonance engineering. And uh, <coughs> Daniel Onelia for the positron emission tomography. Silvia Burchelli is uh, uh, the, the vet med of the institution. Then I, uh, I collaborate with your institution, and uh, these are the guys that uh, I like to join in my activity, experimental activity. This is the other group where we developed in Bologna this other concept of the drug with these three simple molecules, is the HBR that we publish on JBC. PISA or SANE. Thank you. <laughs>